I've been rustling around in all my resistors for the last hour and trying to find the that golden ratio for making a voltage divider of 1 to 2. And if I have a 1K resistor, I don't have a 2K. If I have a 10K, I don't have a 20K, etc., etc. So I just, yeah. I've been drawing down on my resistor stock, haven't been replenishing it, and this is, uh, <laughs> this is what I get. But I could save myself all this headache because uh, had I just soldered up a, a voltage divider and kept it in my Arduino RPI box, I would have one right now and uh, yeah, everything would be hunky-dory. So if you're not familiar, when you're working with Arduino uh, or the RPI, the inputs, the digital inputs are 3.3 limited, volt limited. And the output of a lot of devices are 5 volt, like this thing is a 5 volt uh, output. And if you put that output, like this yellow wire, directly into the digital inputs, you will fry them. You will fry your device and trust me, I've, yeah, I've made that mistake. So you need this magic voltage divider, which will take the 5 volt from the output of this and bring it down to a 3.3 that you can plug into your microcomputer. Okay, so what I have done is I have ordered a whole new assortment of resistors, kind of refill my stock. Uh, why don't we go over, in the meantime, I'll go over what a voltage divider is and why it's necessary to have one, and then we'll solder one up and we'll give it a test. How's that? A lot of times when we're doing work with a Raspberry Pi or Arduino, the inputs to the device are limited to 3.3 volts, but many accessories require 5 volts, or the output 5 volts is what I should say. And for example, right now I'm dealing with a uh, water meter, and the water meter takes in 5 volts and it outputs 5 volts, and if I put that raw output directly into my Arduino or my Raspberry Pi, I can burn out the input on the Raspberry Pi, which is a bad thing. Trust me, been there, done that. The voltage divider is a simple way to lower that 5 volts down to 3 volts. And yeah, for many of these uh, 5 volt Arduino accessories, you can just use a 2 to 1 ratio. For example, uh, on the water meter, I use a 4.7 kilo ohm with a 10 kilo ohm. Uh, and I've also used a 10 kilo ohm with a 20 kilo ohm and a 1 kilo ohm with a 2 kilo ohm. Now, warning, you want to te definitely test the voltage output before you plug anything into it. But uh, yeah, as a rule of thumb, these will generally work. Also, as another rule of thumb, you want to use the highest ohm values for these. So if a 10K and 20K ohm uh, resistor will pair will work for you, use that. Um, yeah, instead of going the other way, like saying a 1K or a 2K ohm pair, well, that may work, but yeah, your power draw is going to be a lot higher, and we'll go over that. Voltage dividers. Well, the pluses, it's cheap. I mean, resistors are almost free. Uh, it's easy. You just wire together two of these things in this little T configuration. It's fast. So you can literally just twist the leads together. I prefer to solder them. And the calculations are relatively simple. There's the two variables of the, the resistors and then the voltage. And then you get your answer, which is uh, this result right here. The minuses, uh, well, it's basically a short between five volts and ground. So this is one of the reasons you wanna use the higher resistor values when possible. It works well with small currents. It's not efficient, especially if you, if you need a larger current here, uh, you're going to have a larger current flowing this way too. You, if you end up with a disconnected ground, you're going to fry your device. I'll show you why. And the resistor values change by application. So yeah, you, you can't always just say, I'm gonna use a 10K and a 20K and that will give me my desired value. Um, you really have to look at the application, how much power uh, is going to be needed uh, to, uh, to get the desired result. This is the example I mentioned earlier, and this is a, an ultrasonic distance sensor, and the, it ran on five volts, and I got the five volts directly off the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the trigger line. It's not really important for this video, but it's just what caused this thing to, uh, to operate. Down here is the ground, and it just goes over to the regular old Raspberry Pi ground. And this is where the magic happens right here. This echo 
line, if I had just run it directly over to the Raspberry Pi and delivered five volt pulses into the input, yeah, it would have trashed my Pi. And uh, yeah, I've done that. I've made that mistake. So you don't want to do that. So through a little bit of electronic magic, I can use this 4.7K ohm resistor and a 10K ohm resistor in this configuration. And when I take a tap off in between those, I get my 3.3 volts. And of course, this end is grounded. So yes, this little uh, resistor configuration will give me my 3.3 volts. The math for this is not too bad. It's uh, you've got your two variables uh, for your resistors and then your input for your five volt or for your VN, I should call it. And so it is basically your R2 value here divided by, and then you add up your R1 and your R2, and then you divide this R2 by the sum of these two and then multiply it by your VN right here. In this first case, uh, let's do 10K and 20K. So we got a 10K ohm resistor here, a 10K ohm resistor here. We got five volts coming in, we're hooked to ground and we want 3.3 volts out for our, uh, what is this? I got an Arduino here. Okay, so the math is we plug our numbers in, R2 is 20, R1 is 10, 10K, R2 is 20K, and then our VN is five volts right here. So we plug in our numbers, we get out our calculator, we add up the 10 and 20 and we get 30. So we have 20,000 divided by 30,000 times five, that's two thirds times five, and two thirds of five is 3.333 volts. And that's what we get out of there. Okay, simple enough, huh? Okay, let's try it with another value. So this is the one I am using for, uh, for the uh, transducer for that uh, distance detector. And the values are, we have 4.7K, we have 10K for our R2. So let's plug in the numbers. We have 10K for R2, that's here. We have 4.7 for our R1, and we have 10K again uh, for our R2, and then five volts for our input. So we end up with 10K divided by 14.7K times five. Uh, just reduce this down and get out our calculator, and it's 3.4 volts, which for what I was doing, that's within tolerance. It'll, it'll uh, live with a 3.4 volts. Okay, so this is the general formula. And what we've done is I have broken the, uh, the ground. So the ground has accidentally come loose. And so we end up with a really, really big value here for our ohms. And this would normally be infinity. But of course, calculators don't work well with infinity. So we'll just plug in a number like a billion, a billion ohms. So we start out, we get our R2 value, we call it a billion ohms. And then we come over here, we get our R1 value, which is 10K, 10,000 ohms. Uh, add it to our 1 billion ohms, multiply by five, uh, reduce all that down. So we got a billion divided by basically a billion times five. This ends up as 0 0.999999 times five. So this is pretty much one times five. And we end up with an output here of five volts and so we have toasted our raspberry pi arduino whatever we've got here it's fried okay so one of the drawbacks is you got to be really careful not to accidentally ever disconnect that uh, that ground wire i mentioned that you want to use the highest resistor values you can here and this is why i've Reswizzled the basic formula for uh, for voltage equals current times resistance and I won't drag you through that But basically you can get current equals that VN Divided by R1 plus R2 so we can find out how much current each one of these uh, uh, Resistor pairs is costing us in power drain across here because again We've got five vol five volts hooked to ground Okay, so yes, the first one, we just plug in our numbers. We got the uh, five volts 
divided by the 10k plus 20k so get out our calculator and we end up with 0.000167 amps or 0.0083 watts that's a tiny amount that's pretty tolerable even if you're running on batteries what have you okay so let's bump it up we'll we'll raise the uh, resistor values will actually lower the resistor values I should say it correctly to 1k and 2k so we got 5 volts divided by 3k and that ends up at 0.00167 amps so 10 times more power well still this is a small amount but it's still 10 times more and it's 0 0.0083 watts now let's uh, do this step this up one more time 5 volts divided by 1 ohm plus 2 ohms now yeah theoretically this will give us our 3.3 volts out but let's see what happens we got 5 divided by 3 which is 1.67 amps or 8.33 watts so yeah that's a terrible amount of power that's basically just flowing from here to ground and yeah not a good thing okay so this is why you want to use the uh, largest resistor values you can and still get the accepted result okay so let's go wire some of these up so i can throw them in my in my uh, micro computer box so i don't have to uh, go dig through my resistors every time i want to make one of these we'll uh, we'll solder some up here i've soldered up a couple of these voltage dividers this is the 4.7 and 10k and this one back here is the 10 and 20k so the only construction notes here are you uh, want to twist them together in the middle and you want to leave yourself some room on either side so that you can bend these around and it won't just snap off at the resistor and the other thing you notice i left this little nub here and that is so i can connect it to one of these uh, jumper wires one of these female jumpers these particular brand of resistors have a very small lead so I had to double it over and add some solder to fatten it up so it would stay in the connector but yeah uh, whatever it takes a lot of these resistors will come with a, uh, a nice lead and these will fit perfectly on them okay what else is interesting um, this is made to fit from one side of the breadboard to the other you don't have to do that I've also made them smaller in the past let's remove this one we will uh, measure the ohms across here make sure we have our uh, correct values you'll notice on this one I marked it with a blue marker I prefer black but I, my black marker is dry this is the negative side so I can literally just grab this out of my box and I don't have to do all the testing on it um, let's see that we can see is 10k ohms and that is 20k ohms so that's correct as i was saying i can grab this out of my box and i know which side is the negative without having to measure stuff okay what else do we need to do oh we should hook it up to a power supply and ensure that we are if we put in five volts here ground here that we are getting our 3.3 out here it's time to check this out we should if we put 5 volts across here we can see over here on the meter it's 5.05 .05. we should get 3 volts between ground and the center tap and that's what we're getting okay well that's it for this voltage divider i hope you found it useful and interesting in your home diy electronics projects